We're now in section 20 of our AutoCAD Electrical 2015 course and you can see that we have Project Demo 20 in our Project Manager. I'm in the Schematic subfolder and at the moment Demo 01 is our current drawing. Now I'm not actually going to open any more drawings or work with a drawing in this case. What we're going to look at is our Project Properties. So you just click on the project, right click and on the shortcut menu go all the way down to Properties here and that'll bring up your Project Properties dialog box. Now the most important bit is this one, where your schematic libraries are, for example, where your icon menu is, your panel footprint libraries, and so on. So you've got to make sure that those paths are correct. Components, so you've got your tagging format, your suffix setup, your component tag options, your description text uppercase as well. All of these things need to be set for your project. Wire numbering, how do you wire number? So you can see there, percentage N. So that basically tells AutoCAD Electrical just to put the wire number there. Sequential, do you want it sequential? As in, do you want it to start at one and then increment one, two, three, four? You might not want it to do that. You might want it to start at 10 and go 10, 20, 30. So you'd have 10 and 10 in those boxes. Moving across to cross-references, again, it's numbering, defaults, cross-reference options, text format. So this is all your settings for your project in AutoCAD Electrical. Then we look at styles. So we've got things like arrow styles, PLC styles. So these are your default styles that you start with whenever you place an arrow, whenever you place a PLC, whenever you place a wiring style like a loop or a wire connection. Also fan in and out marker styles as well. And drawing format, you've got things like ladder defaults, format referencing, where we've looked at X, Y grids and X zones, and also scaling. So all of this, once you've set it up and you click on OK, is your defined project properties for your AutoCAD electrical project. We're still in the Demo 20 project, and we're still in the drawing Demo 01 in the schematic subfolder at the moment. Now what we're going to look at this time is drawing properties. Now normally all of your AutoCAD electrical drawings in an AutoCAD electrical project adopt the project properties, but sometimes you need to individually update drawing information as well and give it its own properties as well that might be slightly different to the generic default project properties that you would normally use. So it's a very similar process. You go into the project manager again, but this time you right click on the drawing, go to properties on the shortcut menu, and you want drawing properties. You'll notice there, look, you can apply the project defaults if you want to. Sometimes, though, you do need to do a settings comparison. You can run that as well. We're just going to go into drawing properties and work our way through. So, drawing settings, you've got things like the description. This all shows up in the details panel here. So, you can see that this particular drawing is a flow and interconnection diagram and an input-output list, which is that table there. We are in Demo 20 project, so the sheet number 001 is correct for Demo 01, but the drawing number's incorrect. We need to change that back there to 20, because it's project underscore drawing number, like that. Project 20, 01. That's how we number our drawings. I go to the components, you'll see this is very similar now to the project properties, wire numbers. Again, very similar but there are here some specific drawing properties. Cross-references, very similar again. Styles, you can update this so that an individual drawing has its own individual arrow style, PLC style, wiring style, and so on. And same with drawing format. You'll notice that the setup is very much the same as the project properties, but you can individually set it per drawing. So when I click on OK, everything is updated there now. And you'll notice that it is sheet 001, and that's updated in the details down there as well. So that is how you set your drawing properties in AutoCAD Electrical. We're staying in the Demo 20 project. We've still got the Demo 01 drawing open. Sometimes when you're working in AutoCAD Electrical, you might need to bring in perhaps a generic AutoCAD drawing as what they call an external reference, commonly known as an XREF. Now you can bring XREFs into your AutoCAD electrical drawings no problem at all. And what will happen is it's like they're paper clipped behind the current AutoCAD electrical drawing. 
The quickest way to do this is quite literally to type XREF. Now, if you've got the dynamic input switched on, you can see that the suggestion menu there brings up XREF at the top of the list. And I click on that and it brings up my external references palette. Now, at the moment, you can see that Demo01 is the current drawing and it's opened. If I want to add a reference drawing, I can attach a drawing, an image, a DWF, a DGN, a PDF, or even a point cloud if I want to. So there's all those different file formats that I can bring in to use as a reference for my AutoCAD electrical drawings. Examples might be, I might want to attach an image, which might be a photograph showing this actual setup, this AutoCAD electrical installation, physically where it sits in the installation itself. A picture paints a thousand words, as they say. So if you've got a guy on site taking photographs, you can actually attach the images to the drawing so that people can visualize what the actual installation looks like. I might want to attach a separate drawing that has information about a particular component in an electrical drawing, for example. I'm not going to attach any references in this case, but that's how easy it is. Now, once you've brought those references in, you can reload them, you can detach them, you can even bind them to the existing AutoCAD electrical drawing, and then, obviously, that's bound to that drawing, and it becomes part of the AutoCAD electrical drawing as well. So using your XREF manager or palette here, you can bring reference drawings in. Now, there's other options as well. So you've got your help there. I've got refresh as well. I can refresh the list. Now, there's nothing there at this point in time, but I could refresh it. And as I said earlier, this is where you attach those reference files. We're staying in the Demo 20 project. We're still in the drawing Demo 01. Again, I'm not going to be using any drawings. What I'm going to show you this time is your title block setup. This has already been set up for the Demo 20 project. But when you're creating a new AutoCAD electrical project, you need to set up what is called your title block settings. They're on the project tab on the ribbon here in the other tools panel and it's title block setup. The title block update here because it's already been set up, is prompting me for various types of setup. Now you'll notice it's asking me about a WDT file. As soon as you create a new AutoCAD electrical project, a WDT file is created. I'll show you here. So here's our project folder for this particular section, Demo 20. And you can see, look, Demo 20 WDT. It's all the text settings and template settings. There's the project file, WDP. So these two go hand in hand together in the project folder. What are the options we have? Well, there's the project WDT file. That's the default that always goes with your project. So it's the project specific WDT file, and it's linked to the current electrical project, which I've just shown you in the project folder. If that isn't available, it'll look for a default WDT file found in a folder within your AutoCAD electrical installation. When neither of those two is found, it will just go for the default one that is available in AutoCAD electrical. Now there is a second method. You can apply attributes to a title block, one of which is the WD underscore TB attribute. Now if you bring a new drawing into your AutoCAD electrical project, you'll notice that you're prompted to associate it with the project defaults and settings. As soon as you do that, that WDTB attribute is applied to that drawing. It then becomes an AutoCAD electrical project drawing. Now you can individually apply that attribute if you want to, but normally when you bring a new drawing into a project, it does it on its own. So that's your title block setup in your AutoCAD electrical projects. We're staying in the Demo 20 project, and we're staying in the Demo 01 drawing, and we're going to utilize the drawing this time with what they call a title block update. Again, it's on the project tab on the ribbon, over here in the other tools panel, and it's this one here, title block update. What you can do is you can update your title block settings and attributes. So you'll notice here, look, title one is sample project schematics. So if I tick that now, that's one of the lines that will be updated on the title block using this WDTB attribute that is associated with every AutoCAD electrical drawing. So that's allowed me to insert a title. 
What I might want to add there as well is a sheet number or a file name and so on. So I can activate each drawing to process or I can do it for the active drawing or I can do it for the entire project. Now in this particular case, what I'm going to do is also show the drawing section. Now I can do drawing description, one, two, three. So let's do that as well. Let's add that to one and two and three. So I'm going to do this for the active drawing only. So I click on OK, active drawing only, and it all updates. You'll notice the title block is updated. There's a lot more information. So if I pan and zoom in, you can see that information's come in. There's the description, there's the title, and you can see that a lot more information's come into this particular drawing. Now, some of it might not actually show on the title block. Some of it might be invisible attributes that are used for reporting purposes, such as things like the areas, the descriptions, the locations. They might be invisible. So if I go back to title block update, you'll notice here that things like drawing section, that didn't show up. That's because it's an invisible attribute that is used for reporting. So you can filter your report by drawing section for example. So I'm going to cancel that now and you can see there that I can double click on this and I can edit it using the enhanced attribute editor if I want to as well. There's nothing to stop me just editing those attributes because at the end of the day it is just a block that is a title block. So I'll double click on the wheel to zoom extents and then I save my drawing with those new title block attributes updated. In previous videos, I've mentioned the WD underscore TB attribute, and it's normally stored in the WDT file in the project folder for your AutoCAD electrical project. So we're staying in the Demo 20 project here in the project manager, and at the moment I've got the Demo 01 drawing open. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an entirely new project drawing. Now to make sure that the WDTB attribute is available, all I've got to do is click on the project, right click and select new drawing on the shortcut menu. Now the reason I've done that is because it then links directly to the template that is being used for the project. There's the location, so that's my demo 20 folder there. I'm going to give it a name, so this is the DWG file name, which is going to be demo 50, just so I can differentiate it from the other drawings in the Demo 20 project. I'm also going to give it a description as well, just so again I can differentiate it in the details panel down here. Now I can add other things like project code, installation code, location code, sheet values, that would be 050, and it's project 20, so it's 20 underscore 50, like that. Now you could put a section, a subsection for reporting if you wanted to. I could also go in there and add the drawing properties if I wanted to. I'm not going to change those. I'm just going to go with the default project properties by clicking on OK. Now, you'll notice as soon as I do this, it will start updating. Now, that updating is where AutoCAD Electrical is adding that WDTB attribute and all the other associated settings from the WDT file in your project folder. So you now know that this has the WDTB attribute and all of the project and drawing properties from your AutoCAD electrical project. Last thing we need to do though is just scroll down the list here, make sure that our Demo 50 drawing is in the schematic subfolder where I want it to be. So I can just drag and drop and that's now in the right place in my AutoCAD electrical project. Plotting your AutoCAD electrical project is very different to plotting in your regular AutoCAD. You'll notice up on the ribbon there we have no output tab. It's very different in AutoCAD electrical. You plot from the project manager over here, and it's this icon here and this fly out here. Now we're staying in the Demo 20 project. I've got Drawing Demo 01 open, and if I want to plot my project, I click here. And what I've got to do is I've got to select the drawings that I want to plot. I'm going to select all of them for this particular project and click on OK. Here's the batch plotting options. There's a lot to consider here, so be careful. Layout tab to plot. You're plotting the model tab. Most AutoCAD electrical drawings are all done in the model tab. You don't tend to use layout tabs. The reason being is there's no need for scaled viewports. It's all schematics 
and circuit diagrams, so there's no need for like a 1 to 20 viewport. Now it may be that you do use scaled viewports, so you do have the option to use your layout and any save layout, so you can do that if you want to. You can also run pre-plot and post-plot command script files. Sometimes you have script files written to take information off of the drawings and perhaps put into databases and spreadsheets and so on. You can use the plot configuration file, the PC3 file, so I can select one if I want to, or go and browse for one, or I can just use the layout tabs default. I've also got a detailed plot configuration mode that is off at the moment. I can go in there and set things like orientation, plot area, plot scale, all the things like upside down, offset, line weights, remove hidden information, and I can also perhaps use a plot style file. So if I click there, I can use a CTB file that I might have set up for my project. CTB stands for color tables, by the way. So I can do that if I want to. Normally, most of the time, though, you would set that and then switch it off so that it's just automatically used. I've got a page setup name. There might be a page setup associated with the project as well. And I can pick from a list of active drawings that might actually have that page setup applied to them. Now, I might want to plot to a file, a PLT file. Sometimes that happens where you've got a separate room where all the PLT files go to a big plotter and you plot all the drawings out in one location. So you might do that as well. And the nice one here, order, plot in normal sequence or in reverse order. That's really useful. If you've got 200 drawings to plot, the last thing you want is the drawing number one at the bottom of the pile. So you hit OK Reverse, and the first drawing that comes off the plotter will be 200, then 199, then 198, so that you get a pile of drawings that are sequentially numbered the way that you would expect to look through them. So that's your batch plotting options. Now, I'm not going to go through and plot the project, but that is how you would plot your AutoCAD electrical project. I'm going to cancel that now and just show you some of the other options there. What I can also do is publish to the web. So if I click that one, I can publish to a known location ready for a website and plot either out as a DWF, a JPEG or a PNG file. Also as well, I've got another option, which is publish to PDF, DWF or DWFX. So those are basically portable document file formats. PDF we all know, DWF and DWFX are Autodesk portable document file formats that can be used with things such as Autodesk Design Review. Now you can also zip up your project and send it to somebody. But be careful here. If I click here, it'll tell me that I do not have a zip executable defined. It needs to go in the envelope file for your AutoCAD electrical project. So if you're using a zip file, you need to have the zip executable in the envelope so that AutoCAD Electrical can pick up on that zip application and make sure that it zips all the drawings up into a zip file to be emailed, for example. So those are all of your options that you can use to either batch plot or transmit your AutoCAD Electrical project.